told my wife that I lost the keys to the outside room, but the truth is the room is full of car parts, including the dashboard that is getting recovered. Let's just say if she had to find out then. Hey guys, hope you're doing great. So as you have seen, I was loading the dashboard of the E30 that I'm currently building in the back of the van because we are taking it to be recovered. If ever you're thinking of building an E30 or any classic car for that matter, well, I'll speak specifically about the E30 right now because that's what I'm building. Just know that you are going to be spending a lot of money. You are going to be doing a lot of traveling, you're going to be making a whole lot of phone calls looking for parts uh, you are gonna find parts but um, when you get back home when you check them thoroughly you will find that they're actually not so in such a good condition i mean at this present moment the back door i had to change the driver's door uh, had to change obviously there's rust on these things they old so there's a, there's a whole lot that I, I have had to do to the car and mind you when I bought the car the owner previous owner told me no you just have to put in an engine and that's it and I guess you know what probably there are some other people who would you know just take it as it was and, and then put in an engine and drive it but for me I'd rather just do it right first time around and that is exactly what I said I'd do and that is exactly what I'm going to do. So right now I'm taking the dashboard to be covered, carpet, uh, we took the entire carpet out, getting it washed. So basically the entire interior was taken out, uh, the wiring on there was bad, had to change that because there was a whole lot of cuts and joints on it and I just got uh, new wiring harness fitted that so that's sorted now we're getting the carpet we're gonna be cleaning clean the carpet putting it back the seats have been done um, recovered so now we're gonna do the dashboard the steering wheel mm, yeah that's what i can think of right now with that said let's be on our way and i will continue just to talk more of the e30 adventure because I really think that most people um, see the excessive prices on marketplace or whatever uh, for the clean ones, right? Now I understand why the guys are selling them at what they're selling them at because getting this car to be neat, clean, reliable, you know, basically getting it back to its former glory requires a lot of time a uh, lot of money and yeah it's intensive that's it let's be on our way okay just went to the garage to fill up and i needed something to quench my thirst because it's very hot and i came across this here it's vault energy hemp cannabis hemp infused energy drink hemp cannabis infused hmm. let's see how this goes ladies and gentlemen but that's it let's be on our way okay guys so i just picked up the mtech steering wheel here this is the mtech one steering wheel uh as you can see it's in a state and <laughs> unfortunately that's just how most of these things are you'll find them in a state but what i really like about e30 parts is that bmw still makes them so meaning if you can't find something i mean there's a lot of things that i couldn't find but i could uh give bmw a call ordered and within a couple of days i'd have it ordered so i don't know what other cars actually still have stock or they're still making parts for um i mean 30 year old car 
so it's pretty amazing even though you're gonna pay uh, premium for the parts but it's also just it's nice knowing that you can get parts brand new so we continue on our way so we eventually got to the place it's in uh, Jamiston uh, just spoke to the gents so it should take about two days they let me know once it's done but anyway here's how it currently looks so I'll show you how it looks now and then once they are done uh, I'll also give you a snippet of how the work looks and all of that so, as you can see here like I said these dashboards chances are you're gonna find it with cracks and all so there we go here's how it is right now and then the steering wheel also it's a mess but hopefully they'll sort it out so yeah that's that's the other thing that you must always know about the e30s guys you're gonna be traveling you're gonna be taking things here and there picking them up so consider uh the finances with everything and yeah let's be on our way we're going to see shayno we're going the other side of town going to falls off and then yeah we'll continue talking Whew, finally about 15 minutes later we have arrived we're here in Paul's off we're here at carbon bros and yo guys it is really hot anyway let's go in there see what they're up to hello fire how are you you good man nice to yeah, see you again yeah, yeah. Yeah. came inside Carbon Bros, I saw that the guys were working on a Ducati, looking amazing, and Shano's just gonna tell us a bit about it. So, yeah. Hey guys, so this is a Ducati 1299 Panagale S. Um, this bike in specific was actually 100% plain red, original paint. What we've gone and done is we've put a Troy Bayless limited edition design onto it. So those who don't know, Troy Bayless is a three-time Superbike World Champion, he did also race in MotoGP. Uh, this bike on its own is, it looks just stunning. The helmet actually matches the bike in terms of modifications. The owner has also put on an acro, um, acropont exhaust as well as a completely open clutch plate display. Get here, Shayno is the one who introduced me to all of these energy drinks. Now all of a sudden he's now drinking sugar-free drinks and now he's telling me about how many teaspoons of sugar each uh, thing has. How many? So here's an interesting thing. Coke, less sugar, has 30% yeah. less than normal sugar. First. So if you buy a 2 litre Coke less sugar, it has 27 teaspoons of sugar in its stock. Here at uh, Carbon Bros and Paul's off, but inside Carbon Bros we have Salva Technique and we have this amazing TGI here. They just did the work on it. Nonetheless, I'm not gonna tell you what they did to it. Um, the guys, Fuzz, <laughs> Fuzz is going to tell us what he did to it and you know how much it costs and all of that. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. So he's gonna tell us how much it costs and then and. The nitty gritties of the stuff. Let me hand it over to him. Thanks, Fire. Um, so on this GTI, what we did was uh, two-step paint correction. Uh, first step before the paint correction actually got into swing was due to the condition of the paint from the previous owner. We had to sand the paint down and take paint measurements throughout the vehicle to ensure that we don't burn through the clear coats at any point in the polishing process. So once we got the sanding out the way of the problem areas 
and managed to go as low as possible without compromising the paint. We then set to work on compounding the car with a very abrasive uh, polishing compound. And then we refined the paintwork uh, using a finer compound. And then after which cleaned up the paint and then we applied a ceramic coating. We only, or we do stick coatings here uh, at Sauber Technic. And so yeah, so at the moment you'll see there's a lot of dust on the car. We're just waiting for the coating itself to sit before we actually uh, get down to doing the final cleanup, etc. And in terms of the cost, so typically for a two-stage paint correction, you're looking at about 8,000 Rand, including the ceramic coating on the paint work. Obviously, you don't have to opt for a ceramic coating. We have a whole lot of different coatings which we offer, uh, as simple as wax, as complex as ceramic and everything in between. Another good one that we use quite a bit of as of late is the graphene coating. It's a lot easier to work with. Uh, it doesn't offer as much protection time in terms of the ceramic, but it does offer the option to top it up as we go along, you know, to prolong the use or of it and, you know, keep it serviceable. So yeah, so that's what we did. We also did the interior of the car. Um, you know, deep clean the leather, bring back that matte look um, to the leather itself and uh, coat and treat the leather as well. So it maintains that look going forward. And yeah, so that's pretty much what we got down to the car. <laughs> okay guys, so I just got back and as you saw, it was an, an eventful day and I always just enjoy taking my camera with and just capturing the whole day and then just sharing it with you guys because I come across a lot of valuable people who I think you yourself would get some form of value from the things that I see, the people that I meet. So if there's anything that I can give back to you is to share the things that I come across during the day. With that said, the E30 build. Hmm. Would I do it again? Heck yeah. So, what I can tell you, if you're really looking to build your own E30, have patience, because uh, I've seen guys who have built their cars over a period of two years, even five years. So, it's a matter of, you know what? Your finances have to be right. Um, you have to have the right people working on your car because I can tell you now there's a lot of guys who have taken their cars to get fixed or to get painted or to have engines fitted and unfortunately after the work is done then they have to take it to somebody else to do the right thing and that's money guys so E30 build or I suppose any classic car build is not a, an inexpensive one. So just be ready to spend money, time, and definitely have patience. So with that said, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in seeing the journey of the E30, I already have a page on Instagram, which is fire underscore E30, dedicated to my E30 build. And I think even when I'm done with the E30 build, um, I'll still continue just to post videos and pictures on there. So, if you are somebody who's looking to build an E30 or who is interested in the journey, please do give that page a follow and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.